back at the peninsula. Looks like the Confederates are finally, they're coming up to again defend Richmond. Got the army of the Shenandoah building, supply depot. All of my men are still starving. But the supply depot is complete. So that's good. It's not enough. I don't think, no, they're, none of these are connected uh, to that supply depot. Oh, he is. I'm still getting provisions from the river. So that's good. May 8th. Hampton Division. Are they moving up or away? Okay, they're moving towards. So I'm going to move the Army of the Ohio closer. I want them to reinforce. And this will be Orlando B. Wilcox's armies here. Nope, they are withdrawing. That's Hampton Division. That is under Magruder. So that's good to know. And I think the Army of the Potomac here is... They're, they're literally just sitting there. They, there's not much they can do. Army of Northern Virginia. You know, if Magruder, the Hampton Division... Oh, with 15,000. Let's see. They're going to keep coming up and running into Wilcox here. Oh, they're actually going to start a fight. All right. We've got a massive, enormous manpower advantage here. But let's go for it. We've got the juiciest deployment zone known to man right over here. We've got a huge manpower advantage. Uh, and we are fighting on the defensive. This will be a treat of a battle. My opinion. Okay, so they are not lined up here, unfortunately, uh, as as great as that would be. But I have great defensive ground um, for this whole army. They're only going to be coming down the Front Royal Pike, or heading right up toward Winchester. This is about the six hundred and fifty fifth Battle of Winchester. <laughs> this is I've fought so many battles of Winchester so far. Uh, this is probably the 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 the, the one place I fought on most in this entire campaign uh and so yeah you know here we are again so i'm gonna basically straddle the front royal pike i'm gonna have my uh men just sort of sit over here and uh yeah all right casey you move there cameron jr you've got artillery so you come up this way and john gross barnard John Gross Bernard should probably be with the Peninsula forces. John Gross Bernard was, uh, he was the chief engineer, as a matter of fact, for the Peninsula campaign. He was a, a huge supporter and uh, sort of favorite of uh, George B. McClellan, the young Napoleon. And it was actually some of, some of the earliest criticism about McClellan as a you know, army commander as somebody who was, who was supposedly supposed to be um, the guy, you know, out there winning the war for the entire army. Uh, it was John Gross Bernard, who, who was one of the guys who sort of fell out of love uh, of uh, McClellan because of his dithering on the peninsula. This is also the first New Hampshire light with her 12 pounders here uh, are an elite unit. They're a veteran unit here. They've got three stars and they have a battle flag. So let's give them something cool. What does that one say? U.S. Colored Troops. All of these are just like state <laughs> flags that are really hard to spot out. That one's that one's pretty cool looking. I don't necessarily want a Stars and Stripes one. Uh, and many of these I genuinely don't rec recognize. So if you are, you know, one of these vexillologists out there who, who knows what all of these are and can differentiate them to me, uh, that'd be cool. This one looks like it could be Michigan State flag. Possibly. I can't see the beaver, though, so I don't know. <laughs> well, let's give them a generic stars and stripes. Why not? Uh, and they're going to dig themselves a parapet, just like I have been doing with my artillery quite a lot recently. Uh, giving them some pretty good cover, and of course, moving them into the cover. So I've got uh, uh, 12 pounders and my rifled 
James Guns. I'm going to do the same thing over here. Uh, and I'm going to, of course, like always, detach my artillery just so that I have a bit more freedom of movement with my infantry divisions. Now, one of the one of the things that's a bit different about this campaign that I, I normally do a little differently is I have not made artillery divisions uh, on their own. And I typically do. I do that actually quite a lot because I, I don't often like to... Uh, I don't often like to have my artillery connected to my infantry for the most part because it makes maneuvering my infantry alone quite a lot more difficult, right? I, I like to be able to move my infantry divisions, you know, keep them really mobile, keep them moving a whole lot, keep them really assertive and aggressive. It's hard to do that when I have to also worry about the artillery limbering up and moving around. And so I, I often just, I often don't do that. <clears throat> so... Uh, that's just a just a bit of a difference, a thing I normally do a little differently that I'm doing. I sort of doing on purpose, kind of keeping that a little bit different on purpose because this is a, a different campaign and I'm I'm trying out new things and I'm I'm trying out all sorts of uh, other stuff. So I'm gonna put one last little thing here, and I want to watch this other road because I wouldn't be surprised if some of them kind of detach and come down the old Front Royal Road. Uh, over here, but I've got Casey's infantry division watching this. I've got uh, let's get detached here, Pleasanton and Zook sitting over here. And depending on where the secesh materialize and attack, I've got plenty of reserve troops, I've got cavalry guarding both flanks, I've got infantry covering my guns, I've got lots of artillery in good, strong, and plate entrenchments. Uh, and I actually have, I've got quite a few more engineering points, so I'm going to take somebody who doesn't have a perk yet. I'm going to just have him build a parapet straight across to cover this. Uh, and that's, that's the only parapet I'm going to build. Uh, I don't think I need too many more. Make sure all these guys everybody should have rifles at this point and yeah he got a perk because of the little little bump that he got from building those things so i'm going to give him my favorite perk which is zwav and you'll see that i have actually plenty of these guys that have the zwav perk because it is my favorite i've got whole divisions with the zwav perk all right let's start the battle let's get some skirmishes out get some vision up on these roads and see what the Sasesh have in mind for us. Enemy is withdrawing. So yeah, they came up and uh, and they are withdrawing. What a kind of a uh, an unfortunate um, anticlimax there. But oh well, I'll take that. Victory at Winchester. <laughs> I somehow managed to capture 31. Uh, it says 28 captured and 31 soldiers have been paroled. So that's... All right. That's fine, too. All right. So let's take a, a, a look at the strategic situation over here. So we have Orlando B. Wilcox. He is uh, my major general of the Army of the Shenandoah. His, his uh, attached corps is 5th Corps. It's William Sherman's uh, corps here and what i need to do uh i'm gonna i think i'm gonna leave hooker the leader of the army of the ohio i'm gonna leave hooker guarding winchester and what i want to do is bring wilcox uh, and sherman down northern virginia steadily pushing away all of the rebels down toward richmond because that is essentially what Mc, uh, McClellan is waiting for, right? McClellan is waiting for reinforcements from the north to get down here because McClellan, you know, very, very much doesn't want to come and attack these these defensive armies here. Even though we know, we have the benefit of knowing that, you know, we comfortably outnumber them. Our morale is probably tremendously higher. 
we have you know better better men generally um but you know we don't want to we're role playing as McClellan so McClellan would rather wait until we get some you know Wilcox's army down here threatening Richmond as well before he makes a move on it so what I need to do is move the army of the Shenandoah into northern Virginia into north northeastern Virginia and start heading down toward Richmond but we also know that the AI is bizarre and has priorities that make no sense <laughs> so as soon as I move this army into sort of eastern Virginia here the Army of the Potomac is going to make a, a straight shot right to Winchester. They're going to, because that's all they ever do. So I need to find a way to reinforce. I'm going to leave Hooker here, the Army of the Ohio, to, to mind Winchester. And I need to make sure that he gets more men o over here to challenge the 20,000-man Army of the Potomac, which might be the one that makes that move. Um, so what I'm going to do is, luckily, I have the Potomac Corps of Instruction. And they have quite a few men, right? They're in the Department of the Capitol here, but I've got Manfield, Mansfield's entire division. And I can send some of these men over to Hooker to make his army a bit more robust and more capable of defending Winchester against who knows how many attacks. So I'm going to, I'm going to do that. I'm going to move my artillery just so it looks nice. And let's bring in, find the Department of the Capitol. That's what we're looking for. And I'm going to bring that's another 6,000 men. This will make Hooker's whole army about 20,000. Got two pretty strong brigades of cavalry. Another battery of artillery wouldn't be uh, wouldn't be too bad. But another another brigade of uh, cavalry might be good too. I think I'm going to I'm going to use Humphreys to reinforce Philip St. George Cook. He was a uh, if you recall was a veteran from uh, out west, and I'm going to bring him over here too. So this will put this will put Hooker at about twenty three thousand men, just about. Uh, and as soon as they transfer over, in just about three days, we'll have some pretty good stuff now he's also got some pretty excellent artillerists they're both they actually both have the skilled laying perk for counter battery fire now let's see if i can get him some better guns we've got 66 12 pounder napoleons they're not great for counter battery fire uh i still have to wait for my 10 pounder parrots which are being built and that's in 10 days so pretty soon i might actually be able to give him some 10 pound parrots and how big is that order 64 so yeah let's for now Let's give them some 12 pounder Napoleons. Make sure they've got just something a little bit better than, than the six pounders. And I'm going to see about more better cavalry carbines. Nope, I don't have I don't have anything. I've got to wait 23 days to get more Jocelyn's, unfortunately. And make sure all of these guys are rifle armed as well. They are, and I've even got a perk or two to assign. Sylvester Churchill. You also probably remember Sylvester Churchill from our Western campaign. Uh, he's doing pretty well with the 10th Pennsylvania over here. And we've got the 4th Indiana. We're likely going to be fighting defensively, so I'll give him Ace of Spade. Why not? Kentucky, Maryland, New York. Charles Gilbert. These are only the... Oh, this is just the 3rd Brigade. So let's call them the 13th New York. And New York very often gave their men cool Zouave uniforms. So that's what I'm going to do. Sky blue jacket, red trousers, Zouaves. They look sweet. Uh, and 4th Ohio. This is at least the 5th Ohio. I'm going to give them that. Now let's change their uniform too. That looks like a guy from Ohio. And somehow I have... Oh, no. Okay. Third Maryland... Second Maryland light. Third main light. And 
I gotta rename Hook. This is Third Illinois Cavalry. Okay, Army of the Ohio looks pretty good. So it looks like we are engaged. Uh, about 70,000 men from the Confederate Army and my <laughs> rather paltry 30,000 man force. So what I'm going to do is deploy to defend. And I'm going to try to rush down. Um, I don't understand why the Florida State Militia, what they are doing. Um, preparing the siege over here. I've got Sherman trying to move over here to um, to get involved with Hampton's division here. Because I, I genuinely... Uh, one of the problems I was having is there, there's a siege here of um, Fort Vinton. But it's not showing up anywhere except that the Hampton division is engaged in a siege. It does say that I'm probably going to win. So I guess that's good. But I'd really like it if I could get Sherman's 5th Corps over here to engage and, and push them away. Uh, as it is, uh, Wilcox here has... 16,000 men, it says, which seems pretty small. I'm not really sure why. Uh, they, they haven't taken that many casualties at all. But the siege here, if I bring this up, rockets landing. Um, I'm not sure. Is it just... I guess it's just this balance. It, it, it's it got a slightly in my favor. Um, and it seems like it might last a while. Uh, and I'm, I really would like to get Wilcox and Sherman down here. But it's such a mess. Uh, this whole this whole region is such an enormous mess. Um, and again, like the Army of the Potomac here is, is coming up. It's like... I, I don't... I don't. I genuinely have no idea what's happening, <laughs> or like why the Army of the Potomac is zipping around to try to capture Baltimore of all places. Like, I Sherman also has not moved. Yeah, so they're zipping around doing absolutely nothing, uh, and forcing, forcing my Department of the Capital to get in and the Army of the Shenandoah to come in and deal with that. Um, my 5th Corps is finally actually moving, but I doubt I'm even going to be able to engage the Hampton Division because they're basically in the river um, as it is now. Now, I have to fight and win this battle. I have to. I've got no choice. Um, so I'm going to do that. I hope that my very poorly <laughs> poorly led and poorly equipped Department of the Capitol um, will be able to hold off uh, until Wilcox arrives. You can see the enemy have some pretty extensive works, uh, and I'm I'm throwing some skirmisher assaults at their guns just to give them something to think about. I'm obviously not expecting anything to happen here, um, and they're doing even worse than I imagined. So, this will likely be the extent of the engagement before. Wilcox uh, arrives. But I found their works. They're, again, quite extensive. They have a big ol' open left flank, which is what I'm going to... where I'm going to hit them as soon as Wilcox arrives. I'm really hoping we get an overnight arrival so that I can actually deploy them so they're not bunched up on the road and I have to actually tediously march them across the entire map. We'll see. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm just gonna... I'm just gonna cut it here and I'll see you in a few hours.
It also looks like the Confederates have changed their position. So I'll have to scout that out as well. But first, I have to just make sure that none of my men just crunch each other up on the road. Uh, as they tend to do as soon as they have to move anywhere beyond about four steps in front of their faces. Uh, I'm not sure why I have Henry Longenecker's skirmishers several miles away from his parent unit. It's just one of those nighttime things. It looks like the enemy are actually withdrawing, probably. Which I suppose I'll take. I'd rather be able to crush them. Maybe they're not withdrawing. I'm not sure. They still have men in their... Uh, entrenchments. Okay, so my my other core has arrived. Um, Wilcox's core has arrived. I'm getting some artillery in place. I'm shifting things around, and I'm soon going to begin my general attacks uh, against the Confederates over here. So... Uh, I'm not expecting this to be a slam dunk by any means. This is going to be a pretty rough, pretty clumsy battle. I've got a lot of men... With mixed muskets, I've got a lot of men who have not been in combat before. Um, and this might end up being a, a big mess of a battle. We'll, we'll see. I do have some pretty good artillery. I don't have a great position for much of my artillery, however. Uh, this orchard kind of is obstructing uh, my vision. I don't have a good position to get in to do counter-battery fire against the enemy artillery. Um... And again, my infantry is, is uh, quite poor at the moment. And of course, I don't really want to risk too many of my veterans. But I also don't want to put all of the, the fighting uh, difficulty on the shoulders of my rookies, my greenhorns. Really don't want my uh, cavalry to get chewed up by their artillery, so withdrawing them. And I'm bringing a couple of batteries up here for close support. 
uh, against these attacks here. Close support from my uh, third battery over here. Gustavus A. DeRussi firing in. Uh, I'd like my New Hampshire artillery to uh, start firing as well. They're actually good at that. I suppose I should get this division into action. So many of them. No, well, you get back. So many of them have mixed muskets. It's it's hard to. Uh, try to rely on them to do really anything.
Not much commentary in this one, but major victory. Battle of Washington, D.C. Uh, couldn't really ask for better. Uh, very passive enemy AI. Just sort of let me walk up and, you know, again, grabbed, grabbed an advantage on the left side of their line and just pushed it. Just pushed it up. Saw a chance to go to uh, charge the guns with my cavalry. Uh, don't often get those opportunities. And I went for it. It went pretty well. So major victory. 27% uh, casualties for them and 28 for me. So uh, I'll see you on the results screen and back on the campaign map. Glorious victory at Washington, D.C. Pretty good. Um, and before we even see sort of what's being wrapped up over here, uh, I'm going to have to end it for now. I'll probably come back. Um, I've a little, I've lost the script a little bit about where I am in the various videos I'm doing, so we'll see. Battle of Washington. We were finally able to catch up. Uh, we've got Sherman's Corps here. Um, finally able to catch up to that army that was besieging Washington, uh, and hopefully put it to bed. So we got the Fifth Corps under Sherman, and we've actually got Harney's, the uh, whole department of the capital, ready to deploy as well. So let's check out and see. Fifth Corps will arrive in 13 hours. It's about 10 in the morning. Uh, we have tons of engineering points, most likely because we were fighting a siege. Uh, and so I'm going to fortify this road. Yeah, this road. It doesn't look like they have too many easy ways to get here from this deployment zone. I am going to check, though. Oh, hey, look at that. <laughs> I'm really glad I looked. Okay, so again, I have the the, the choice. Uh, this first division is mostly, these are like rear echelon guys. These are drafts that I recruited for the most part to bolster my other forces in the field, right? I, I don't expect these guys to do much fighting. That said, they have already done some. Uh, this is not their first battle. I do have a ton of engineering points and I know exactly where the enemy are. And I mean, this, this again, you know, we can, we can, we can criticize me for cheese. I'm I'm fine with that. I feel as if I have earned, uh, you know, the uh, <laughs> I've earned that criticism uh, to some extent, and and that's fine. That's fine. We can criticize me for cheese all we want, but I think so. The the, the fictional situation here is essentially that uh, this is a, a a siege camp that is surrounding one of the forts around Washington, and I have managed to. Uh, make a sally or or whatever. I don't know. Listen, uh, I'm not going to try to justify this too much, but I am going to dig parapets and I am going to fortify my guns and I am going to just crunch the enemy right here on their deployment because I can and because it's my campaign and because I want to. So there. These guns will likely not be able to fire at anything. <laughs> But you know, uh it it it's good that they're they're at least they're in uh in cover. Okay, Heinzelman's whole division have planes rifles, which is something. Uh I'm also going to dig some breastworks here. Uh I'm gonna put Denver's artillery uh once again in a parapet. This is a trick. Uh, you've seen me do this a few times now. This is a trick I picked up from Brambra, who is another... Most of you, I, I am assuming, if you have found this channel, you ought to be aware of Brambra. Um, oh boy, these guys have mixed mus muskets too, huh? Um, all right, so put the 10th Illinois and Runyon's... 4th Kentucky over here, and then Longenecker this way. Revere and Carr will be on my right. There we go. Uh, but yeah, I assume most of you know Brambra's channel. If you don't, you should. Uh, I'm, I'll, I'll put a link down there to this. I mean, th this is my sort of second sort of weird, goofy uh, 
role play peninsula campaign thing so i don't know how many of you are watching as opposed to the tutorial ones but you know we'll see in any case um putting your guns in a small parapet and then upgrading the parapet so that it has the bodies uh, out in front of it sometimes helps prevent these sort of reckless uh, cavalry charges that have been a feature of the 1.07 patch but i have rambled enough let's get to the action let's start this up and my artillery starting things off pretty strong good to see uh and yeah no need to be no need to be coy here let's get my infantry up and let's put some pressure on these rebs Uh, no, I'm gonna stop these guys. So we've got skirmishers. My artillery. I'm kind of afraid to give my artillery any actual firing orders because I'm afraid that if I do, they'll sort of lose their minds here. It does look like they are firing at uh, that skirmish unit, though. Okay, move on. Skirmishers shouldn't be able to do too much damage to my guns here. Um, you know, I am entrenched pretty well. But I do want to get rid of them all the same. I haven't taken a single casualty. They are being fired upon. Okay, well, I got to turn to deal with the cavalry instead. I just want them to rotate. There we go. And division commander, you got to get up there, my friend. <clears throat> Now, why were you turned around? That is not at all the order that I get. Well, okay. Go take care of those guns. Don't withdraw. Let's get up there. I'm really unsure why everybody is moving so slowly in this part of the map. Even the orders are terribly, terribly slow. Cheeky close range bombardment. See if Goop here can actually do anything. Again, like look at how look at how slow everyone's moving, and it's it's probably just mostly the cover. Turning on long range. You shouldn't be idle. Okay, there you go. You're getting your orders.
Looks like we're doing some pretty considerable morale damage to uh, the enemy, even if we're not. Even if we're not inflicting too many casualties. 60 so far. Skirmisher unit is still here, and it is only it's still only taking five casualties. Finally getting some units to break. And we're sort of keeping the uh, the revs kind of clumped up over here, right where our artillery is bombarding. So again, I'm not sure that I'm doing an awful lot of damage from the bombardment from my artillery at all. These are just six pounders. But you know, having them all sort of bottled up like that increases the chances that I'm inflicting casualties and it's good practice for the artillery, that kind of thing. I'm going to have these guys switch to long range. And I'm going to have to make sure after this battle I actually upgrade all these guys to muskets. I have plenty of them now. So there's really no excuse for any of my uh, regiments, any of my brigades on the field to have anything less than Springfields. These guys are stuck. There they go. Sherman's gonna get here and be really upset that he missed all the action. Looks like the enemy are starting to withdraw. So I'm gonna turn these guys on to fire at will rather than bombard. Yep, and they are withdrawing. 7.4% casualties. I doubt I can turn this into a major victory. But I can very likely take many more of the enemy's guns. Which I'd really like to do. But I'm also going to hasten everybody along by getting my men out of their trenches. And to advance right up into their faces. Who knows? If I'm able to capture a couple of brigades, 
um, I might actually be able to turn this into a major victory. It would be pretty lovely to, to get a major victory right outside the capital. But we'll see. Minor federal victory, Battle of Washington. I will take it. 231 casualties for me, 2200 for the enemy. Hampton Division fleeing in panic. 996 rifles captured, 42 guns. I will take 42 guns any day of the week. 42 enemy soldiers have been paroled. So pretty good, pretty good. Driving the Hampton Division away from the capital is great. Um, it looks like, once again, the Army of the Potomac has teleported behind me. Um, this has been happening pretty regularly um, in this, uh, this very strange campaign so far. What I really want to do, given the situation, is drive down with Wilcox straight down to the peninsula. And, uh, and and go and, and see if I can get to the battlefield and help relieve uh, the Army of the Potomac. Now, we are doing favorably in the siege uh, at Rocket's Landing here. So it's not super imperative, and it would probably be better strategically for me to get rid of this teleporting Army of the Potomac before I do anything else. So I'm going to be cautious here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to advance some time. I'm going to make sure... Okay, so they are routing. I'm going to move Wilcox up to capture the supply depot. And the Army of the Potomac is retreating by sea. Which means I'd like to get my flying flotilla up here to keep an eye on them. And, yeah, I'm going to get the 5th Corps. We get Sherman. get as quickly as he can down here and yeah we're gonna have another battle of Winchester so I just want to take a moment to show you all this is as far as I can zoom in these are all of the battle flags of the battles of Winchester and environs so we've had Harper's Ferry we like this this is probably not even all of them Right? And now I'm going to be attacked by a 20,000 strong Army Northern Virginia with the Florida State Militia, unless they are chugging along over here to Alexandria. I'm not sure. We'll have to see. Oh no, they are... Where are they going? Are they going to try to put that under siege again? This is ridiculous. <laughs> this is so, like, I have no idea what they're trying to do. I'd really like Sherman to get a move on. Come on, Shermie. Okay. Wilcox is going to have to abandon the attempt to take Alexandria. And I'm going to get Hooker to come over here. As I'm going to get Hooker to come over here as well. Because again, I want to get rid of these armies. I want to push these armies away from Washington. If, if the peninsula campaign is doing anything for the war effort right now it is pulling aggro away from the capital that's that's its purpose right now so again we're doing okay in the siege we have a slight advantage um, but it keeps kind of going up and down and i need to get reinforcements there quickly so actually i'm going to leave the corps of engineers here but i'm going to i'm going to bring burnside's Come on. I want Burnside. Why can't I click on Burnside? Burnside, come on. There we go. We get Burnside into the siege here. Um, it's, you know, he's he's got a very small division, 6,500 men, but right now anything helps. 
see if I can crunch this army. Everybody's going to be coming along. So, oh my god, I forgot that Wilcox has such a small core. I gotta wait seven hours for Sherman's fifth core. He's not gonna want to miss another fight. So, all right, let's let's do this. I'll I'll deploy cautiously, and I'll see if I can wait for Sherman to get here. Okay, day two. Uh, two of our other armies have arrived. Uh, three of our other armies have arrived, as a matter of fact. And we will be deploying them both haste. All right, I was going to just uh, skip ahead until I uh, until I, I sort of engaged the rebel line, their fortifications. I've got all my reinforcements very, very arduously marching up very slowly. Uh, but it looks like they're sending a division after my cavalry. So I'm going to go ahead and deal with that. And honestly, breaking this division might be enough to end the battle. Uh, it's not not many men, but their morale is a bit fragile. They're, they are on... I mean, technically, they're on friendly territory. They are in Virginia. Um, so they do have a slight... A very slight morale advantage. But I do have a lot more men... And I have the, uh, at this point, it seems like I have some advantage uh, against the, the game bugs. Which is not always the case. You gotta take them when you can. But yeah, I've broken, um, I had skirmishers break UJ's battalion over here. And uh, now, of course, I've got infantry engaging this, this tiny division, who's this huge. commander right up there. Alright, so breaking this division is not nearly going to give me the morale advantage that I need at all. But it'll uh, let me inflict a few casualties and you know, take uh, more of an advantage over here as well. Let's move these boys. Somehow, UJ has... Um, whoops. Somehow you, uh, UJ seems to be reforming, so I want to put a stop to that. Okay, I've 
broke them with a charge. If it uh, seems like this, this battle sort of jumps around a lot, just know that my computer is garbage and it is, like today, it's much worse than it usually is. Um, so if I'm skipping around a lot, it's because there's I, I'm getting a lot of like uh, stutters and various other things that I, I don't want to subject all of the uh, all my audience to. So I'm sort of skipping things around and, uh, and trying to make them a little less irritating. But okay, now that that little diversionary division attack is taken care of, I'm just going to speed up time and I will come back when there's something to do. Not sure what's going on here. They're sending another division somewhere. I'm not sure if it's just to try to get rid of my skirmishers here or to take a position along this fence. No idea, but coming again. I'm gonna send time forward a bit. For some reason, nobody nobody wants to take rail, uh, the railroad tracks, which I remember uh, was a thing that used to be sort of, I guess we can call it popular with the AI. Uh, they love taking railroad tracks, so I'm not really sure what happened. The AI here is making some odd decisions. It's coming up against Heinzelman's division, or uh, yeah, Heinzelman's division here. Uh, in in a way that I they're they're leaving their entrenchments to come straight at me, which I don't think is the best decision they could make at the moment.
sure how Benning's Brigade here is standing this. I, I, I'm not sure how they've only taken 500 casualties. I've been pouring close, close order volleys into them for at least 15 minutes game time by now. Benning's Brigade finally broke after taking 900 casualties. Tough customs. Alright, we've ticked over to Major Victory. Which is pretty beautiful. Uh, this was not the most elegant battle I've ever fought. And I'm still a little annoyed about Burton here. But really that's the only setback, apart from the fact that we had to fight on one of the worst maps in the game. But, you know, it is the cross we must bear. Uge withdrew. Uh, there's, there's nothing else going on. I'm not going to try to pursue... I've taken all of their guns that I saw visible, and every brigade that I can see is either withdrawing quickly or is routing, which is fine. I've inflicted 9,000 casualties. That is not easy to do in 1.07. Um, they, I'm honestly sort of surprised they didn't attempt to withdraw once the rest of my forces arrived on the field. 70,000 against 24,000 are odds that I thought the AI would not really like but for all that i mean i wasn't able to i was able to get a pretty strong fraction of my total force engaged but not nearly all of it um but that's okay another another major victory for wilcox here and we'll get back to the campaign glorious victory at leesburg Colonel Churchill loses face. I think that uh, might be my guy. I can't remember. All right. Hopefully this is clearing out Northern Virginia. I'm going to send Carney to take Alexandria. I'm going to burn this depot down. And I'm going to get Wilcox. No, before I move at all, 
I need to attend to my my men's um, armament, Harney, and the the core of instruction especially because many of them have mixed muskets, and I have over thirty thousand Springfield muskets that I need to give them. I also believe that I should transfer some of these men over to Wilcox, whose whose army is a little depleted. I suppose I ought to go in here and buy 50,000 more Springfield rifles, eh? I'm gonna do it. 60 days. Wow. Oh, my 10 pounder parrots have arrived. Another note my 10 pound parrots have arrived. Another rather abrupt ending for the second episode of the Peninsula Campaign, but next time we're going to start with a pretty big mess over here on the Peninsula, and we'll have quite a few pretty dramatic battles coming up. So thanks again for watching. I think the next episode will wrap it up. Uh, and if you enjoyed this little mini campaign, let me know. Uh, I'm, I'm willing to do similar things in the future with stuff like this. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.